I wanted to show you why I like it so much, why is it so cool and how easy it is. Hello everyone, I'm Mark from the Wi-Fi Ninjas and today I wanted to show you how to configure a Juniper switch using Mist dashboard. This is a new functionality that Mist has added recently, the support for the Juniper uh, switches and I wanted to show you why I like it so much, why is it so cool and how easy it is to configure your basic switch configuration using Mist dashboard. So let's crack on. First of all, you need to have your Mist account and you need to have your Juniper switch ready for you to claim. So we start with claiming the switch to the Mist dashboard. Uh, Matt has already covered it, how to claim the switch to the Mist dashboard. Well, actually he was talking about the access point, but the uh, procedure for claiming switches is identical. I will show you two different methods of how to add the switch to Juniper dashboard. Okay, let's take a look at the iPhone first. I have a Mist AI application that will allow me to claim my devices to my organization very quickly and efficiently using QR code. I like to use it because it's quick and nice. So let's take a look at the screen of my iPhone. You can see the Mist AI application there. That's what I'm going to use. So after I log in, I will choose my Wi-Fi Ninjas organization. That's where I want to add my switch into and claim AP to org. This is not entirely true because you can also add switches now, not only access points. Let's hit that and you can see two options. You can use QR code and a claim code. I will use QR code because it's faster. You can manually type claim code if you want. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a QR code. That was a perfect perspective. So I won't scan it because it's already been scanned and my switch is in the production. So I will just hit back and switch to my dashboard. So that's where I've added my switch using the Mist application. And when I go to organization inventory, we can see that the switch is a tab here, is already there connected, but originally it wasn't assigned to my site back in fields. I had to do it manually. So when I choose which switch I want to add, I hit more, I can assign it to site and it will be assigned to back in fields. Since I've already done it, I won't do it again, but the switch is already there. Now I can go to the switches tab. This is fairly familiar with uh, what was available for us for the last several months, but this is new stuff. When I click on the switch name, it brings me to the familiar dashboard. But when I start scrolling down, this is all new. We haven't had that before. After claiming the switch, you have to enable configuration management via Mist dashboard. Once you do it, it will push like a short uh, code to the switch, which will allow it to synchronize the configuration between the switch and the Mist dash. And that's what I have done already. And here very quickly, you can see that you can configure just the basic things. Let me just scroll down to what is available. So th that's it. We can create VLANs, name VLANs. We can create port profiles, like you know some switches that will have like a chunk of ports at the beginning will be just access points. Uh, then we will have IoT devices. Then we will have wired clients. Then we will have an app link, you know, this kind of stuff. When we are organized like this, we can just use port profiles and assign them to chunks of ports on our switch. It's nice and easy. In ports configuration, you can take the port profiles and assign them. So let's take a look step by step how to how to do it. Let's start with the ports. So I want to create few VLANs that will be relevant to my network. This is a very quick view of my lab, slightly simplified. But you can see that in the center of my lab, there is a Juniper beautiful switch sitting and it's connected to my Intel NUC, a very small, beautiful ESXi server. 
and I have two access points and one IoT wired device connected to it. To make it all click in a nice and secure manner, I've decided to have four VLANs, one management VLAN, VLAN 10 for physical devices, VLAN 11 for virtual machines sitting on my ESXi, VLAN 20 for wired and wireless users. Unfortunately, I don't have any wired users because, you know, I prefer Wi-Fi. And VLAN 21 will be the VLAN for the IoT devices, both wired and wireless. And here we are happy because we have one wired IoT device. Well done, IKEA Tradfree. You made it through to my network on a cable. So let's start with creating the VLANs. Named VLANs called Networks on Juniper World. We can add it, we can name it, test VLAN ID and call it 666 for some reason. Uh, you can hit the um, apply button and don't forget to hit it because if you don't and just save the config, it will not save your change here. So it has to be applied first and then saved. So think of it like as with a CLI, you have to, in the Juniper world, you have to make a change in your CLI and then commit. Similar thing applies here. So we have our named VLANs. We can create port profiles. Let's say we have all our ports across all sites. They are identical. That's a good practice, by the way. Uh, let's say access points. They will be trunks in a native VLAN 10. And on this trunk, we will allow all the networks. And they are STP edge. Makes sense, right? So let's, let's create this access point port, which I've already done. Then I have IoT, and IoT is not a trunk, it's an access port, and it allows, well, it's an access port in VLAN 21, and it's also a port edge, and so on. So I have all my VLANs, I have my port profiles, I am ready to create my ports configuration using Mist Dashboard for my beautiful juicy Juniper switch. I've already done it because the switch is in production, so I don't want to break it, otherwise my wife will kill me. Here is how, to you, how you apply port profiles to your ports. You can apply it to a single port. So let's say I want to apply AP a port profile to port 001. But if I wanted to apply it to a range of ports, like 1 through 8, I can do that. Remember that in Juniper, ports are being counted from 0, not from 1. Uh, you can also configure port aggregation here. So I've applied my port profiles to my ports. When you hit save, this will be pushed down to, to your switch. Sleek. And next, what you can configure is a switch name. I just called it Wi-Fi Ninja Switch 01. And IP configuration, this is the IP being used for switch to be able to talk to, uh, to the MIST dashboard. And I just use DHCP default since it's connected to uh, to my ESXi uh, box. It will be given an IP address from my firewall, so it should have access to the internet like a plug-and-play fashion. Uh, that's what happened. You can configure NCP. I didn't because I'm a little bit lazy. And then you can configure a RADIUS server for wired.1x authentication. And if something is missing from here and you would like to, to configure it, you can. You can use additional CLI commands for your custom CLI code that you can push down to the switch straight from the dashboard so you don't have to SSH the switch. Uh, you can do it straight from, from here. And just a word of caution here. If you try to push down a config that is incorrect, that switch don't like, the switch will try to apply it, it will fail, it will reboot, and then it will restore its last known working configuration. It wouldn't have been too bad, but, you know, the restart, it takes 10 minutes-ish, so it's quite a long time for the switch to come back to life. And another part that I wanted to, to cover here is the logs on the switch. Switch Insights just here. When I click on it, it gives me like a very good and quick and easy display of events that happened on my switch. Uh, the health condition of my switch, 
you know, like a CPU memory utilization. I can see, uh, I can see the traffic here. I have no events to display today, but I was playing with the switch more yesterday, and that's where I had some events happening there. So let's take a look. Hopefully, they should appear just here. Oh, there we go. That's quite a good few good examples there. You can see some dark lines. They look very scary. And what you can see is that I've changed the configuration several times. Config changed by user. Switch was configured, configured, config, all good. Reconfigured, that's fine. I'm happy. No events because, like, you know, configured, committed, self-explanatory. But then my Switch has rebooted and I wanted to see why it has rebooted. Config failed. Uh, UI commit not confirmed. Commit was not confirmed. Automatic rollback complete. It's a little bit vague, but I know that you know something. Something has happened. That something in my custom CLI was wrong. So I have corrected it and pushed it down again, and it rebooted again. So I've decided not to not to push the configuration through the CLI yet. I will give it a little bit more time. Uh, but for the basic configuration of layer two switching it's perfect it's very easy and intuitive and very fast and what we have seen so far we have seen how to configure a switch a single switch by going to the switch page and configuring all this stuff like you know vlan support profiles applying port profiles to ports radius names you know this kind of stuff but what if you had a hundred switches in your organization it's also very easy and uh, Mist has implemented a very slick way of doing things by using switch templates. So let's take a quick look at what you can achieve with a switch template. I have already created like a sloppy, fast Wi-Fi Ninja test switch template. And here you can see the familiar things that we have configured on a switch level. But this is not on a switch level. This is on a template level now. Uh, you can do same things really, NTP, custom CLI, uh, create your named VLANs, uh, create port profiles, access ports, trunks, you know, in different native VLANs, allowed VLANs, everything can be configured here. And then we can apply our port profiles to, to the ports. Now, this is quite interesting here because when I add a rule, you can see that I can tick some more boxes like a name, prefix, role, or switch model. So I have created my port profiles and and now I, let's assume that I have different switches in my environment. So normally you would have different switches. Some switches, they are 12 ports. Some of them, there will be 24 access distribution switches and so on. So if you have like a established port schedule, you might want to configure them all identically. Perhaps that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, let's say have this template i just want to apply it to to my model of my switch which will be the 12 ports switch uh, ex2300 and that's how i how i do it i can just say all the switches that model of a switch they should have this port configuration rule applied to them or in a switch configuration, you can assign a role to a switch saying, okay, this switch is an access layer switch. So you call it access. And when I just, you know, type here access, all my switches that they have role access, they will have this rule applied to them. And that's that's how you would use templates. So that's I've created this template and the last step before this template is being pushed down to, to the switches, to relevant switches in your site. We have to go to network, switch configuration, and his, here is where I choose this template to be applied to my switch. When I click save, everything that we've configured will be pushed down to the switch, saving you tons of time and making the automated rollout of switches using Mr. Dashboard very quick and efficient. And that's it, guys. I've, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this very quick, brief video about how to configure a Juniper switch using Mist 
dashboard. We've discussed layer two and basics configuration. And in the next video, we will do a deeper dive about how to configure more juicy things like switched virtual interfaces or uh, DHCP sitting on a switch and this kind of stuff. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching this video and take care. Bye.